Welcome everybody to Visible Body Office Hours. I hope you're having a nice Thursday afternoon. Thank you so much for your time today. Um, my name is Emily Genoway from the Visible Body team. I'm joined by my colleague, Matt Smars, out in uh, at, at the Seaport District of Boston. And today we're joined by Margaret Harris, anatomy and physiology professor from Wilkes Community College. And she's going to talk about how she uses Visible Body courseware to teach synchronous online labs. Um, before we get started, real quick, just logistics. As you have questions, please post them in the chat and or raise your hand. We would love to um, unmute and hear some questions and get some dialogue started. Um, so I'm going to hand it off to Margaret to, to talk and talk about um, how she uses Visible Body courseware right now. Thanks, Margaret. Uh, thank you so much. So glad to be here with all of you. And as, as uh, Emily was saying, I teach at Wilkes Community College yeah. in uh, beautiful North Carolina, close to the Blue Ridge Parkway. And um, I started using Visible Body long before I was able to require it for my classes. But I, they wouldn't, we're at a smaller community college and they try to keep costs down. So even though I begged and pleaded and got on my knees and all that stuff, they kept saying, no, no, no. And I kept saying, but look at the price and it's so wonderful. But anyway, I still had lots of students that got it, so that purchased it anyway on their own. So in the spring, we started out, you know, like normal people. And, but I, all of my students, there were predominantly AMP2 students. So they had been in the lab. Uh, they had worked with tissues. They'd used microscopes. They had worked in groups, et cetera. So it wasn't a new animal to them. But when we went into the COVID thing, um, I got in touch with my rep, Pam Auckland, who was just awesome, awesome, awesome. And I said, is there any way that we could get this free? you know, for our students. And she said, well, I don't know. I don't know. Well, within an hour, she got back to me and said, yes, we're gonna make this av available to everyone. So I used it in the spring and it saved me. It just saved my life as far as, as lab was concerned. Um, I don't know how I would have done it had I not uh, had visible body. But going into the fall, I realized that most of my students, because we do a rotating thing with uh, AMP1 is usually in the fall and AMP2 is in the spring, and then there are small sections of two in the fall and one in the spring. So the vast majority of my students were just starting AMP. They knew nothing about any of it. So I worked really hard over the summer to get everything set up. And I I had learned so much about adding, you know, things to quizzes and making my own quizzes, but I was still really, really concerned with these new students coming in, having that real lab experience of working with lab partners. And I incorporated the lab activities in the fall. I did not use those in the spring, but I, I at that point in time they weren't editable which kind of presented a problem and of course visible body in its usual wonderful way made all of those labs editable for us so that they could do them right on their computer so the first one that I assigned uh, was the one in the, the chapter one the scavenger hunt you know and uh, basically on positions you know that usual chapter you know first chapter in every AMP book and they did those alone and they were lost, lost, lost. They didn't know what to do. They didn't know, you know, they were, it was the information, it was all new starting out. So I started grappling with a way to get the students working collaboratively to complete those lab activities in the same way that I would have had we been in the lab itself, you know, face to face. So on our P, first PD day, um, our college, thank goodness, predominantly does PD stuff that's really useful. You know, we have a lot, lot of PD days that you're just sitting there thinking, oh God, when will this be over? But they did one on teams. And I realized that I could set up 
teams for each of my students as a as a group like people in the same section and then i could put them in private groups so that only the members of their group could get in and do those labs together so that is what i did i got that all set up and on the cell chapter is when they started doing it and you know, there was the learning code, you know, they had to learn how to use Teams, but um, I put the file in there for them to be able to see, to collaborate on, and they really got, by the time that we got to um, the tissues, which is a very, very long lab, um, it's, it's longer in pages than it actually is in information, they were realizing how beneficial it was to get together and collaborate and work in those groups, especially on the difficult questions like, let's put it all together, because that's when you really see, are they just memorizing terms or is this really beginning to make sense? Can they take the information they've learned in visible body, they've learned in lecture, and can they put it together? And of course, three minds, four minds are better than one. And so they have really, really begun to use those. I'm getting a much better sense of community among my students. They're not only collaborating about the lab activities, but they've begun to collaborate with each other just in general as study groups, which very often I found uh, not so much in lecture, but in seated labs, that's when you get those coherent groups of students that realize, wow, we know each other, we're working in groups and lab anyway, we're doing this, we can make study groups study together. And that's what this has really fostered. And the lab activities, the way that Visible Body has presented those, being able to edit, put in the information directly into the lab, and none of this, you've got to print it out and then scan it and send me you know, 10,000 emails with all these, somebody took it with their phone and uh, just, you know, um, and the, I figured out a way that I could grade it using my LMS that has worked wonderfully. And uh, the students have just really risen to the occasion. Um, I think that they're getting a much better feel of what being in the lab would be if those lab activities weren't there. Uh, invisible body, it would be a lot harder to, to do this. And so I, I have just been so, felt so fortunate that that is, is there and um, these students are simulating that, that real lab experience and it's, it's just been great. It's just been wonderful. So any questions about how I do it or what I do? No questions yet. So it looks like we do have one hand oh, raised. Sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're good. And it is Ray Thompson. Okay. Hey, Ray, how are you? So go ahead, Ray. I've unmuted you. You just have to unmute yourself on your end. All right, there we go. Um, so uh, I think that's interesting. I'm using Visible Body for the first time this semester. So I'm, 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 uh, on, still on the steep learning curve in, in many regards. Yeah. Um, but you talked about uh, using Teams. I don't know if you are referring to Microsoft Teams or yeah. another medium. But so when you create these subgroups, are the students sharing a screen or are they yes. working independently? No, they're sharing a screen. So they can, in Teams, you can create public groups or you can create private groups. So I put everyone in a section, you know, in my course, I have three sections of uh, AMP1. So I put, made a general section for each uh, whole entire um, section. <clears throat> and then I created my individual groups. I did them kind of randomly because at that time I really didn't know the students well enough, you know, and I thought, well, random is the best way to go. And then if I have to move someone, but. I created private teams. And within teams, you can use it as though you're chatting on your phone. Um, you can put in a text message and it goes to uh, anyone you stipulate that it goes to. 
then they can get into Teams and they can just click a button that says join meeting and they're all in there. They can see each other. They can talk to each other just like we're doing right now. Um, I use something called Collaborate uh, to present my synchronous lectures, but I am in there so much off and on all through the day with, with students that have problems. I needed a vehicle that wasn't gonna collide with Collaborate. So teams work beautifully for that. It's, it's wonderful. They can just text each other, basically saying, okay, when can we meet, blah, blah, blah. And then they say, all right, let's meet Wednesday at two o'clock. They all get into teams that somebody clicks on that join meeting. They're all in there. You can put the files in there. They can see the files uh, to talk through the answers. I asked them originally, did they want to submit their labs as individuals or as a group? And they voted on individually. I think they were a little bit um, pessimistic about everybody in their group submitting or one person doing all the work and then everybody else just copying. So they did uh, decide to, to upload the, the labs individually, but they're working collaboratively to get it done. It's, Primarily, I sit, like I said, with the more difficult upper level questions that they really have to think about. And you always end up with, you know, one overachiever and one kind of underachiever. So between those, it balances out with them working in groups and the overachievers learning even more because they're acting like a facilitator or teacher and the underachiever that wouldn't learn <laughs> very much at all is learning a lot, lot more from the, you know, the gung-ho, you know, let's get this done, let's get the right answers, you know, kind of student. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, Margaret, I don't think we have any other questions at the moment. Did you want to show, uh, show everybody a little bit of your course organization and... Um, yeah. Just a little walk through it. Yeah, helpful. let me uh, let me just share my screen, and I will open up. Let's see, allow access, please. Okay, let me go. This is my uh, Moodle course, and so I have uh, mastering invisible body. Mastering is from uh, Pearson, but I have visible body here, and on every chapter. I tell them exactly what they're going to have to do in Visible Body. And then they just go to Visible Body straight out of the LMS. And of course, in the student view. And all, another thing Visible Body does that's great is the, the videos. I put the basic videos uh, that Visible Body provides. I also told them about the two week free access because you've always got the student that you know, doesn't get to the bookstore, doesn't get to wherever. And of course, I have to send out reminders saying your, your free two weeks is about to, to lapse. And then they go into visible body and I'll see if this looks like this is what the students see. And I usually lay these out. I give them the graded notes. I don't require that they turn those into me, but I do push, 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 push for them to do the rest of these in the order that they're presented. And I try to make sure they understand that Visible Body is a textbook unto itself. Um, you know, they, they have an e-text of the text that I'm using, the Mary of text, I love her, but with Visible Body, they basically got everything that they need. And this is correlated, of course, with my textbook. And then a lab activity like this cell life now, this is where I had to, to, to really do some, some thinking here, because you can see that this is editable. When you double click on it, it is editable. And you when you save it, um, the download, I kept, like right now, the way mine is trying to download, it didn't give, I haven't put anything in there. So it's gonna download a blank copy of the lab. Now, once I uh, talked with um, Emily and uh, Pam, 
I realized if you put any answer in here, so you've got something besides that, you can click on uh, edited or original so that their answers are in here after they put the answers in. But that works. But when they submitted these to me because of the way that my LMS works, I could open this file and see all their answers, but I couldn't mark on it. So I had to figure, I use Moodle and I looked up and in Blackboard, they have something called box view grading screen. And what happens with that is that once they have all their answers in here and they download it. So I'm gonna download this edited uh, version. I'm gonna put test on, the, on here. And I gave them instructions after I downloaded that um, for them to go to where that file was. And here's the one I just did. And I had them download Adobe Acrobat Reader, the free version. Now they could have downloaded the unedited and it will come in here and then they could edit it here. And you can see where I put my little T in there. Okay, and this is much nicer. Then after they've got all their answers in it, they resave the file and it's all there. And then I would go back in my M, uh, MLS and let me move me out of the way. And so under this tissue chapter, I created a tissue lab activity. And that allowed them to upload those files directly into this lab activity. And if I can go into one of these and show you once it gets there, okay, this one is, is a great one, so I'll show you hers. And I asked her and she said that was fine to be a, a guinea pig. So when this opens in that lab activity, I can now grade it right in here. And I know that Blackboard will do it and I'm sure Canvas will. So now you see all the answers, but in addition to that, I can click on this and if she's got a wrong answer, and I don't wanna do it because I don't want her to think she got something wrong. I can click that little X in there and then I can go and put in a text box and said, you did great or this answer is this, or you know whatever that is. So after I'm through grading it, I can put the grade in here, I can notify the student, I can then save the changes, and this sends this marked up uh, program, the complete file back to the student. And it, it, it has worked beautifully. It has just worked great. So I've been really thrilled because at one point before I figured out how to do all that, I was, like I said, I was seeing, I was able to pull up those files like I did just a moment ago. Well, now it, I've already done it, so it's going to take it straight to Adobe. But if I hadn't done that and I didn't have Adobe, I would be, it would download over here on the left. I could open it, but I couldn't write anything on it. So that, that has been a, a godsend to be able to grade it through the LMS. And I know most schools want you to go everything, if you, all this online teaching, I'm, I've taken a, gotten credentials of online teaching, and that's part of what they want you to do is use your LMS, go through your LMS to, to get all this, this uh, you know, you've got to have documentation, et cetera. So all this is wonderful documentation. So any questions about that? I don't know where I am screen-wise. <laughs> so actually, yeah, we do have um, a question in here okay. um, in the chat. And it says, should I ask for courseware for each course where I want to use it? Um, and then who do I email for that? Um, or just fill the form that comes up. Um, so if you do have a rep, um, if you do know of your rep, um, the best thing to do would be to email it over for a courseware account if you're on, if you have not been set up already. Um, if not, I, I will. You guys all kinds of stuff. You don't <laughs> <want to see. laughs> 
And if not, we could always pass your information along um, to our sales reps and somebody could get in touch with you. Um, was that the answer to the question? Yeah, that sounds, that sounds great. And um, also, like Matt said, if you fill out the, any form on our website, that those forms do go to human beings and they come to us very quickly, I think within a minute of you filling that out. So uh, you should get a response within 24 hours from your visible body rep. And that is the person who can set you up with a courseware account, with initial training, all sorts of things, answer any questions you have. How so, can I unshare my screen? Um, you just, there should be a stop share. share. Yep, there you go. Camera. That's where it was. Well, I so we, can testify to the fact that I have never, ever contacted the visible body, anybody, that they did not get back to me immediately. I had a problem, like, on a weekend. And Pam was at the App State football game, and she saw it on her phone and answered me. So, yeah, they are dedicated. They are there for you. And I have been in so many of these office hours, and I have learned so much um, trying to get up to speed, like Ray was saying. You know, I'm just starting out. I'm trying. And these uh, office hours, and the, the farther along you go, um, the, the, you can kind of tell by the, is this an initial, is this a learn how to do it thing, or is this delving into deeper uh, things that what you're really familiar with visible body. So uh, really what I'm talking about today, I guess is one of the things that, that I came up, realized needed to be addressed with getting that collaborative situation going between my students in lab after a while, you know, you're so busy setting up a quiz and setting up this and setting up that. So, you know, I'm finally getting to some of the, the deeper things to use the, all of the visible body capabilities uh, the best way that I possibly can. Great. Thank you. And then um, there was, oh, sorry, Matt, were you going to address the... Oh. Uh, so yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yep. No. <laughs> um, so I actually was going to say that we do have another question, and it is, where are the grades saved? Um, in the grade grade center for Blackboard? Question mark. So I uh, think we're. You're talking about like once I put the you know grades in Visible Body, of course, for for a graded quizzes or anything like that are saved in Visible Body. But with what I'm doing, because of the way that I'm creating it as an activity uh, in my LMS, once I grade it, it goes straight into my grade book. So I would think with Blackboard, like I said, I did a little bit of research because I wasn't, I used Blackboard uh, quite some time ago, but you know, they evolved so quickly. But there's something called inline box view grading screen that for Blackboard that the way I understand it, it works very similarly to the way that my activities do. So once it's graded, it would go directly into your grade book in Blackboard. I'm not absolutely positive, but back when I used the grade book, the things that I, uh, Blackboard, the things that I did came in that way. Awesome, and they said thank you. Uh-huh, you're welcome. I saw that little thank you pop up here. <laughs> Any other questions, uh, um, and really about anything? So it could be about um, Margaret's course, or for Margaret, or for um, just about visible body courseware in general. No one's real talkative today. <laughs> kind of like some of my synchronous lectures. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. I was kind of curious, are, are those of you that are in here, are you just beginning to use Visible Body or have you been using it for a while? That's a good question. Um, we do have a hand raised from mm -hmm. Heidi Jordan. So I will unmute you, Heidi, and go ahead and just unmute yourself and ask your question. Hi, I had a quick question. I had to step out of the room because my kids were needing something when 
Um, Margaret, you were talking about, I missed it, I caught it at the very end, you were able to somehow um, actually like write on the yes. visible body stuff. Can you just briefly go over that real quick again? Because I missed it and I know that that would be something that would be very useful. Are you using Moodle? What, what LMS are you using? So we have Canvas. Well, in, in Moodle, you know, I'm sure it's the same in Canvas, where you create some kind of activity, like you create a quiz or you have a web link or you know, anything like that. In Moodle, you create an activity. And after the students complete that activity, they upload it straight through your LMS. And that is where I can mark on it. Like I said, I believe in Blackboard, it's called Box View, but I'm, I'm just not sure with Canvas. Now I just finished a, a course using Canvas and um, you know, we were able to, to insert things. So I know there's got to be a way because if, if Blackboard and Moodle can do it, I'm sure Canvas, you just have to get up with your IT people, but it's probably some type of assignment you know, the English, the English folks would use a lot. That's, that's more of what they designed that for, but it works great for the, for the labs because you can correct it. You can put smiley faces, you can put check marks, you can put comments. I can highlight things. Um, on that last tissue lab, there was a, a section that said, what are the functions of these? And it had the picture of the body and some of them put skin, muscle, well, that wasn't what it asked them. It said, right. what was the function? So I could highlight that, you know, and draw attention to it. You can freehand draw on it. Now mine kind of looked like a kindergarten, you know, kid when I write, try to, try to like draw an arrow with their, they've got a, a list of things that they're putting in order and they get two of them backwards. So there are lots of things, um, that you can do on those markups, but your IT people would be the ones to know exactly what you could use to simulate what I do. Okay, thank you so much, I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. So it does look like we have another question. Um, so this is Charles and he wrote that he intends to present only a few muscles in four hours and does not want to confuse the students, what is the best approach to present the basics of muscles without overwhelming the students with materials? Are you talking about you're only going to show them like three or four muscles with origin and insertion and direction of fibers and that kind of thing? Or um, I'm not completely clear on what, what he's asking as far as minimizing I will unmute him so we can have conversation. Okay. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Um, I appreciate your, your help with this, all of you. Um, so I'm just a, a novice. I'm just learning about the software and how to use it. Um, in our course, we, uh, we do one semester anatomy and physiology. And so I teach yeah. superficial muscles. Mm -hmm. And um, I've always taught with a either fetal big or cat. Um, we spend a lot of time dissecting which uh, you know, we don't have to do now for doing some kind of virtual presentation. So I might be able to open up to more uh, deep muscles. But right now I'm just concerned that if I use visible body, they'll just be overwhelmed with all of the muscles. And I'm not sure how to filter their attention just to what I want, because I'm just a novice at this. Well, what I do because of, uh, it's if you've played with it yet, when you get the musculature, like the whole body, and you're just seeing the superficial muscles, they can hide them. They can see through them. Right. Uh, and the Anatomy ID uh, mm -hmm. app, it is just killer what you can do. And mm -hmm. being able to turn everything around, upside down, backwards, rotate, plus the... Uh, Simulation of the cadaver dissection. So you're not having to fool with a, a pig. I hate those fetal pigs. <laughs> Yuck. I always did cats, you know. <laughs> I've done and, it both ways, yes. The yeah, cats have I, better muscles. Yeah. But the, the uh, um, invisible body, and I know that yesterday, didn't you guys do uh, office hours yesterday showing 
how to actually dissect as though you have a cadaver on the table? Yes. Yeah. Yep. And we'd be happy to walk through that again. Yeah. I have seen that demonstration and I, I'm not sure what the best approach is. I guess that's why I'm asking you about it is maybe I just want to skip the virtual dissection and just go right to the muscles, their origins, insertions. Um, and I'm just curious how you direct your attention, your students' attention using this software, because uh, I'm very much an in-person teacher, where normally yeah. I you know, be there right with them. Um, so, what do you? How do you handle that? You know, how do you? Is it? Do you give them activity sheets and a list of uh, things to look for? Well, no, I do assignments that are out of visible body. Okay. okay. With, with directed, mm -hmm. like when we get to the 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 AMP app is is an overview. It's, as I said earlier, it's more like having a separate textbook. I mean, it's got everything in it and you can, you can design what you want them to go to specifically. You don't just have to say, okay, here's a page on muscles okay. you know, and, and you've got 47 activities. You can put in the activities that you want them to go through. And then when I did my cats, um, we skinned the cats. I right. always skin them first to get over that yuck factor, you know, and see that, see that superficial fascia and the, the skin layers and all that stuff. And then we put the cats up for, you know, two or three weeks, and then we came back and did the musculature. Well, you don't have to do that now. Right. Now you can do the skin within the integumentary system chapter, and then you get to the muscles and, you know, go from there. And they're just... So you do have to kind of rethink hmm. how you're doing it. So, with, as, you know, for me, when I get to the muscles, I just do the muscles. I don't, I don't have to worry about all those other things we dissect out because I, you know, and then you do the muscles, you do the superficial, and they do whatever kind of hacking that they, they do and on, the, on the muscles. And then get into the abdominal pelvic cavity and they're seeing the organs. But with visible body, it's just all there, real, and you can manipulate everything. Um, I was telling Emily the other day, we, we dissect the hearts. But even when they would get to lab to actually do the, the real dissection, it was mostly just a hacking job. You know, it was a massacre of that poor little <laughs> heart. Right. And the great vessels, because of how they get them, you can't see them. So invisible body, you've got that whole heart. You can make things disappear. You can make them reappear. You can turn the heart this way and that way. You can see all the valves. You can go into the physiology. So before COVID hit, uh, the Rona, as they say, uh, that my folks, I would do everything in visible body and then they would dissect the heart and it wasn't just a hack it up. I mean, they knew what they were looking for when they got there. I see. And, instead of me, yeah, because I know what you're talking about. You know, they're dissecting the heart and you're running around like a chicken with your head cut off trying to show them this or that and the other before they destroy it, you know, or they're standing around saying, I don't know what I'm looking at. Well, in physical body, there's just no chance of that because of the way that it's presented. Yes, thank you. Well, I'll, I'll look at the activities and see if I can set up with just the list I have. Um, I don't want to discourage my students from going deeper. Some of them want to go to med school, you know? Oh, yeah. As far as they want. But um, inevitably, it'll come down to, well, what do you really have to know, you know? Yeah. There's a lot here. I'm confused. That's what I'm expecting. Uh, so, so I'm just going to try to limit. Uh, I, I want them to learn the essentials for the course, and if they want to keep going, go ahead. But that's what I. They need to know what I want them to know. And, uh, and have I think you that, created an activity yet, like on on using the anatomy ID? Like when I do uh, the integumentary system. When they go to the anatomy ID, I have a list. You need to know where all of these structures are. And you put that right on the beginning of the assignment. Okay. And then of course you could put it in your LMS. When I do the bones, I give them a list of the bones in my LMS. And then I tell them again, you're gonna have to know these, 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 you know, blah, 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 blah. 
So that way you're controlling it, even though, you know, if you're not having them learn the names of all the carpal bones, then just say, know where the carpal bones are. Don't right. say, what are the individual names? It's, it, you design it, you tell them what you want them to know. I'm gonna to have to explore that part of the software because I've, I've only seen the demonstration using the, uh, the 3D tools and haven't really looked at the practical teaching side of it. Thank you. We'd be happy to show that, Margaret. Should I walk through that a little bit? Sure. Um, yeah. Okay, I'd be happy to do that. Give me one second. I'm just gonna share my screen and give you a visual um, of what that looks like. So um, here is courseware. So as you can see, it, it, it is the platform that houses all of the visible body content and it allows you to create really cu highly customized mm -hmm. the lesson plans and, and tell your students exactly what you want them to learn, just like Margaret was saying. Good. So here's a course here. Um, and you can, again, name these folders, move them around, do whatever you want to do, but we do a lot of that work for you. So if you have a, an A&P textbook that you're using, we most likely have a course correlation. Um, let me just move my Zoom window. Oh, it's not on this page, sorry. It's on the welcome page, but we have many, like over, I think around 150 pre-built courses. Um, but let's see, so uh, Margaret was talking about the anatomy ID, which is this assignment here. Mm -hmm. So anything with three lines is a learning assignment. So these are, you know, this is where students acquire their knowledge and then it all leads up to a graded quiz where they're assessed and that feeds to the grade book. But the modules look, I'm sorry, the anatomy ID looks like this and this is what, um, where you can actually, you know, this is just some basic instruction for the students to find structures, click on the model, to search, use anatomy search and just some basic manipulation instructions. But what a lot of professors do, including Margaret, is use this space here to write the list of structures that you, that they are required to learn. So you could easily do that right. by editing any of this. Uh -huh. And you could write, you know, you could even get rid of this if you want and just list the bones, for example, that you require them to learn. Hmm. And then they would, um, go into Great. assignment yeah. and then start learning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I came a little late, so forgive me if my if I'm making you do redundant things here. But no, uh, not at all. No. I, I do have some students, um, I think they're learning this on a phone and that really concerns me. I, I mean, uh, is, is visible body gonna work pretty well on a phone even though it's smaller picture? Yes. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, they, they want to be able to have that mobility. Um, but the most frequent problem I have is their internet's um, not reliable. So I've got some students who would rather just do it on their phone for that reason. The phone's more reliable than their internet is. So, you know, I'm glad to know that they can do it though. Or a tablet. Tablet is wonderful. And for the augmented reality, they have to use a phone or a tablet to be able to do that. Okay, okay. So the only thing is to note right now, um, yes, so like they, the, all of the content like this that I was just showing you, this Atlas content, it's exactly the same. So all of that learning content, you know, this view in Atlas, I'm, on a, I'm in Chrome on a computer on the internet. Right. This will look exactly the same on a mobile device. We could even right. show that to you as well. Um, the only thing to note is that the, any graded assignment, um, must be done on the computer in a browser. So it's, it's uh, the mobile downloads contain, again, all of the learning content. So the students could definitely um, do all of their learning, the bulk of the work on the phone. But then when they go to submit an assignment for a grade, that has to be done online. Okay, I'll make a note of that, thank you. You're welcome. But we are headed in that direction. So <laughs> yeah, our goal is to have it fully mobile with the quizzing. Also, one thing to add into that, Emily, is once the students download those mobile apps onto the device of their choice, they don't need internet access to actually use those. So um, they could be off Wi-Fi, they could be somewhere off like cellular, and they'll still be able to access all of that content. Oh, um, nice. So that's just one thing to note as well. Yeah. 
Very good. And you might want to check out that Muscle Premium, um, that app, when you're talking about the muscular system. And, of course, all of those pre pre uh, um, configured things you can edit those and make those your own you know it doesn't have to be exactly what you can go in and and say okay i don't want you to to know this and know this and know this you know yeah yeah yep. you could and then um modules is um from our a and p app so you know uh, the way we differentiate content from Atlas and AMP is that AMP is more guided for the students. So, you know, we always start with the modules because it's more of an ebook. And I'll show you what that looks like. You know, we were looking at the axial, the full skeleton in Atlas, but this is AMP. And what you can notice right away is that the terms are pulled out here. Um, so it, it really directs the students to click on the terms and it shows what mm -hmm. that structure is in the model and you can see that the model is already pre dissected for them to learn yeah well and another thing that that my students didn't realize at first is uh emily if you drop down a little bit to the little arrows down at the bottom of the screen on the left they didn't realize there were more pages there mm. that that first picture is not all I you see. know so it kind of introduces them, as she said, in increments where they've got the whole skeleton, then you get to the skull, then you get to the specific bones in the skull and so on and so forth. And if they don't click, they're missing tons of the content here. Got it. Got it. That looks great, by the way. Terrific. Oh, thank you. Oh, yeah. yeah. Here's some bony landmarks. So as you can see, it is really guiding them from, like Margaret said, general to specific. And so this work of, of putting the content in a pedagogical order, we've already, we've already done that for you in the yeah. AP app. Ah, okay. So you could just assign, you know, chapter 10 and 11 hmm. and, and that's it. And it's done. Great, great. And if you're, if you're putting, if you're aligning it with your textbook and you're doing a one semester course and you're picking out kind of pre-made course that goes along with your text, then if you're using a one semester course book, as opposed to a two semester course book, mm -hmm. it's going to decrease the amount of information that's there for the one semester course because it's not in that one semester book. Right, right. That's important. Um, again, you just can't get everything in uh, that you could two semesters. I teach A&P one and two in two semesters. Yes. This is for, uh, that's more of a course designed for our, our uh, health services uh, folks. Yeah. And, but we want uh, our bio majors to have it to some degree. And that's what this course is all about is uh, getting into, after they, they go through phylogeny and all that stuff, they get into anatomy. Uh, mm -hmm. And that leads to a comparative anatomy eventually. But we can't get too deep. We've got, you know, one, one semester, like you mentioned, to just yeah. uh, give them the ideas. Uh, so we do leave out the carpals. We, you know, I, I introduce the names. I don't expect them to learn them. Right. Uh, now, it, what you're just showing a moment ago with uh, the temporal bone, we do expect them to learn parts of the temporal bone. So there are some things we need to drill down on a bit. Uh, but we don't do a whole lot like uh, if we're going to go to all the brain anatomy, you're going to do a pituitary or something. They get that in lecture, but I can't really show it to them in the lab very well. So this is interesting. It, has, it opens up possibilities for more lab work that we don't normally do. Well, and I use visible body in my lectures. Um, okay. When I was live, when I was seated, um, and I use them in lab as well uh -huh. uh, because they're just so visible. I mean, they're just yeah. so easy. The students are just wowed with it. Yeah. Like, oh my, and the augmented reality, if you haven't played with that, <laughs> it's killer. It was an eye opener, isn't it? <laughs> mm hmm. You know, you've got that heart floating in front of you in the air. It's just so cool. I did see the demo, and it's really remarkable. Yeah, science fiction stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Thank you. Any other questions? or? No, I think I'm just going to have to learn to uh, plug in 
I'll, I'll, I'll play with the modules and look what they're in there, maybe edit them. And then uh, I'm sure my IT people could help me plug in visible body to my course, which is probably going to be different than, than what you've seen because we use Canvas, not Blackboard. Uh, do, you have a, uh, do you have, I have the capability of just putting in a link? Yes, yeah. Well, that's all you have to do. That's all I did is I, I just, when I, uh, I just, ch you know, chose putting in a link and I named it Visible Body. And then when they just go down that link sign, it takes them right into it. Okay. And then it's all on the other end. So you've got the assignments there, the modules and everything. Mm -hmm. yep. Yep. And we do have a single sign-on with Canvas right now. Okay. So yeah, so that, that makes it nice. It, you'll, you know, in the Canvas menu on the left, you will have a direct link to Visible Body Courseware. Um, so we can link your course again. Ju it's just single sign on right now. And like Margaret said, what you can do um, to directly link to those assignments, you can actually create a, uh, a web assignment by copying the Courseware assignment link right here and okay. plugging that into your LMS. That way, you know, if um, the student, you can direct your students right to this assignment. And then again, with Canvas, we do have single sign-on um, and are working towards a deeper integration with all of the LMSs so that we right. hopefully will have great return and, and that deep linking yeah. in the near future. Cool. Always something new, always. Okay. And we, we welcome your feedback. This is, we love hearing um, what you need. We, we just wanna, we wanna solve for these problems. Thank you. You're welcome. Do we have any other questions in the chat or anybody want to raise your hand? So it looks like in the chat, there are no other questions yet. Um, I don't see any new hands raised. Um, so I think you asked a really good question, Margaret, about, you know, the experience level if we've got. Yes. Yeah, so we'd love to hear from either uh, folks who are just reviewing Visible Body, considering using it in your next course, or if you've been using it, we'd love to hear your experience or any questions that you have. Did Charles have a question or I saw his name come up. No, not another one. Just talking. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine what will happen is when I actually do get in and and start to mess around with it, I'll probably get questions that I need to bother someone with. At the point of it. So. We are here for that, you know. Yeah, we're, we, more, uh, yeah we're more than we're more than happy to help. Um, if you just shoot over your rep and email, yep. um, or even any of us, um, we're more than happy to answer answer that okay. question for you. Sounds good. Okay. Well, if there are no other questions, um, we can we can wrap up. Um, Margaret, did you have anything else to add or anything else that you wanted to to demo or show? Well, I you know I I, I do I I'm not sure how many people because you know Visible Body exploded during COVID, did it not? You know, I mean, people that never knew anything about visible body, all of a sudden, that's why so many people, I think, are, are novices. You know, they're just beginning. But as they go along and they, and uh, the gentleman that was just talking sounded like he was very much about, like I was, trying to in some way simulate that real laboratory collaborative experience. So this may be you know, something with folks in here, they're not quite to there yet. I mean, I've been into some that they were kind of, they were doing stuff that I hadn't even thought about I wanted to do yet. But um, it, it's wonder those editable lab activities, like I said, I didn't use those at all in the spring. And they are wonderful because they're, they're directing you with the students with pictures, they're telling them to go to this part of the visible body um, assignments and look at this and look at that and then using something like Teams, Zoom, you know, whatever. Like I said, I use Collaborate, but I'm in there so much with my students that I set this up in Teams 
but it's something that maybe some of you in the future, when you get ready to try, you know, you've got kind of everything set up and you know how to do the rest that you, you know, you might want to consider to try to get that collaborative effort because online students have a tendency to feel like they're just out there in the ozone and they don't know anybody, they don't know their names, there's not that connection that they end up with in class. Um, so, you know, maybe that's something for, for some people to use in the future to try to foster that, that mm -hmm. type of environment because it's very, very much uh, feasible to do it uh, using the visible body labs. You're so right, Margaret, that the collaborative part of it makes it a more social experience. And for many students, that is a key for learning yes. kind of thing, for learning a lot about uh, anatomy terms and things if they have someone else to, to learn with. Right. Seems to work better. You know? Yeah. And yeah. it could be me or it could be the lab partner or both. Um, right. And right now, they're pretty much sitting alone at home and it's not much difference than reading a textbook. Uh, so that, that I would need to get that collaborative part of the lab back going, going up again. Mm -hmm. It's a great way to do it. And then I think they, you start there and then they start collaborating on a lot of things, you know, a lot of study, studies groups and all kinds of things. So this, the way that Visible Bodies lab activities are laid out, uh, it's just the perfect starting place to, to get that community working with other students then going instead of them feeling like the Lone Ranger, you know, sitting at home. Very good. Thank you. And I'm just um, scrolling through the lab activities themselves, um, which are all on our website. They are free. So you can just go to our website and download them. I got there. You can either get there at visiblebody.com or from your courseware account. There's a direct link under instructor resources. I did that a little fast. I'll show you again. In the left menu here, it says instructor resources. Um, you would just click that and it'll bring you to the lab activities. Okay. Very good. And there's lots of support for students there too. Um, you, the, yes. They've got lots of things because no matter how many times you go through how to manipulate those models, they forget. So. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Yes. Yeah, see there's good help menu. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. We've tried mm -hmm. to, you know, there are some really nice, um, we make our videos very brief and our support articles short. So you can get right to exactly what you need to learn. I think this video is about 30 seconds. Yeah. But it really does a good job of showing exactly how to manipulate the models and some of the advanced mouse and keyboard controls. Okay. Yep, I neglected to watch all of these when I first dove into it. So I kept getting whatever it was way down at the bottom of the screen. I couldn't figure out how. And then <clears throat> they were in one of the office hour things. Somebody said, well, you push down the space bar and then you can drag it wherever you want. And I said, oh, oh okay. <laughs> so. hmm. That's great. All right. Well, um, if there are no other questions, we can wrap up. It's been really nice. Thank you so much, Margaret. We really appreciate oh, you're it. Welcome. Thank all of you. I've enjoyed it. I hope I've provided some some help to somebody. <laughs> you have. Thank you. Yes. Absolutely. All right. Well, please, you know how to reach us. Feel free again. Any of those forms on our website go directly to our team, and we're happy to help. Okay. All right. Thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful afternoon. <laughs>